Well, I think your life changed for the better, didn't it? I don't really remember. Well, I do. And uh, I remember the first time I met you. You were, it was so cute because we were, it was the first, the first time I met you was the table read. I hadn't met that you. That first day? That first day is the day that we went to go read the script for, for the, to start the show was the first day I met you. And you were so cute because you came up to everybody and said, hi, I'm Reba McIntyre. And we're like, uh, oh, thanks for putting your last name on there because I wouldn't have known <laughs> who you were. You know, you could have, we knew who you were. But you, you I love that because you never assumed that anyone knew who you were, which we all did. America does, the world does. And, and you introduced yourself to everybody, cast and crew. See why I love her so much. See? It's true, though. Because I was nervous, you know. It's it, first off, you're doing a pilot, which is nerve wracking. Then, first time reading the script, it, the table read is is it every week the table reads nerve wracking. Were you nervous about reading the script in front of everybody? You know, you can read it. You can read it all day long by yourself and read it out loud. But it's kind of like being in Sunday school and then you're asked to read a scripture or in first grade it's and you're asked horrible. to read something or the fifth grade or whatever grade to read. It's kind of like, should I read it fast? Should I read inflections? Yeah. Well, How am I going to do it? It's, I still am nervous every Wednesday for table read. Yeah. In a good way. Yeah. Because people don't think the table read is still, I feel like every week I'm auditioning for the role. In, in, but not like scared of my job security, but every week you're auditioning for, oh, the writers see you do this, or the producers see that you can go there. And if you can nail that table read, and, and also if you, if you, if you kind of screw it up, that joke could go away and like, no, but I liked it. I'll do it better next time, yeah, I don't promise. don't take it away from me. So you try really hard to nail it, you know, because otherwise they'll take it away. And yeah. Or they'll think you can do that. And you're that like, no, I just swallowed. Like, you'd be in the my worst thing is at a table read when you know you're, you love this joke. They wrote just great material, and you're about ready to be like, well, well, because Reba, I said, so. And then you ruined the joke because you were swallowing or you got a bubble, and you're like, no, no, I can do it better. I just <laughs> was swallowing wrong. But that was the first day, and I was nervous. I was more nervous about the table read because you put everyone at ease right away. Oh, thanks. Thanks. It was a fun day. I was very excited. And I think I knew. Well, I kept, it just felt so right. I've been in another table read situation like that where it was the first day on a, on a series and it wasn't, it didn't feel like ours did. It, it was felt, fun. It hurt. <laughs> this felt perfect. Yeah. And right. Yeah. I think at the very beginning, Reba and Barbara Jean's relationship was like if Reba could have banished her from the <laughs> earth, that would have made Reba very happy. Banished, that's a strong word. I mean, you know, time out maybe, but banished? Okay, time out in Germany for two okay, years. Okay. So that would have been all right with Reba. And then I, I think that Reba had a kind of um, an attitude toward Barbara Jean of, do you know what you're getting into? Will you be able to handle Brock? Because Brock's a little boy, too. And now, Barbara Jean's really a little girl at heart. Big-hearted, a little girl. And so here's two kids together. Now, Reba's going to have to manage both of them. And then Reba got to liking Barbara Jean, but no, don't tell Barbara Jean. So it's kind of a gamut, a roller coaster of emotions between Barbara Jean and Reba. It's evolved, too. I think the thing that I made very clear from day one, which is I think why I got the role, was I decided that I loved her. And I would never, I could, I would never understand when she was being mean to me. I couldn't understand why we're not going to be, of course we're going to be fast friends. And any time I was mean to you, you took it at, oh, you're kidding? Yeah. I love your humor. And I, that's how I harsh. knew in the audition. When they said there was a line in the pilot, and, and it was in the audition, and I kind of improv a little line, which I think made it into the pilot, and it was, they said, you said to Barbara Jean, um, which is a great line, so Barbara Jean, when you're in church, do you sit, uh, is there a special pew for the adulterers? And which great line. And then during the audition, I, I just improvise. It's like, well, well, no, actually, I sit with the choir um, because I, that's, I sing. So I don't know what that pew, like, I never even got never acknowledged what my she harshness. just said. And I think that's when the producers maybe felt like, huh, that's, that's kind of maybe where it needs to go. And I think they've been very careful about, because don't you think when there's two women and one guy, they usually make one of them the villain? 
you know, of course he'd leave her. Well, of course, why would he be with her? And I think they were pretty careful of creating characters that you kind of, I mean, they're of course rooting for the beginning. I, I, I told you this last night that when we did the pilot and the whole studio audience is filled with Reba fans and you've got some of the most loyal. They're very loyal. Great fans. And I was scared. You know, I'm, I'm doing this scene where I, I stole her man. And I said, Reba, you have to talk to me between takes or someone's got to walk me to my car because these are some rabid Reba fans and they're going to take me out. I'm the other woman. And It I, was really funny that at the first I, season, everybody's like, well, the show's cute, but I don't like that Barbara Jean. I don't like that Barbara Jean at all. I mean, I just don't like her. Oh, I mean, and then every season, it seems to evolve where, well, that Barbara Jean's funny. That Barbara Jean, boy, she really got you the other night. And it's just evolved to where everybody likes to see Reba and Barbara Jean, uh, butt heads, getting scrapes together, which we have. We've gotten, I've gotten Barbara Jean in, into predicaments. She's gotten Reba into predicaments. And we come out still on that same, we are buddies, but I'm not going to admit it. I'm not even going to say I like you. But it's, it's, because uh, that keeps it more interesting. I'm it's, glad they do it that way. I, and it's, a, it's an interesting dynamic, too, and a dynamic that I think a lot of America has to deal with. There are stepmothers, there are children involved, and there's uh, your, your mother and another woman, and I think that that relationship is interesting. Yeah. And I, I think they were surprised by the response of the audience to these two women, and they want to see what's going to happen. And I was just at the eye doctor the other day, getting my checkup, and the girl was looking at me, and she says, all of a sudden, halfway through, she's like this, and she goes, oh, Barbara Jean. She recognized me. Well, Are you, you this serious? close, And then she goes, oh, I hated you. I hated you. And then I'm thinking, well, not a good time to be in my eye, you know. Uh, but she, and she goes, I just own the beginning. I was so mad at you for... Uh -huh because they love you, you're Reba. And I was so mad at you for what you did. And then, and then I realized, well, then I now I just want to know what's going to happen. And he better not leave you. And that's what's cracking me up this summer yeah. is that we left this last season on a cliffhanger between Brock and I. And I've got people on the street that you meet that are like, that, I, you know, in the beginning would have vanished me. Um, but now they're, they're like, well, he better not leave you. He can't leave you. And then their other side is, they kind of want to see you back together with them, but, but then they, they don't. But they happen to you, and then they don't want to hurt you. Yeah, it's weird. You may kick the bride. One I just laughed out loud when it's I watched show. it the other day is when we realized that I have stepped on the train and ripped it, and then I'm sitting down, and Melissa Barbara Jean is jumping, <laughs> jiggling, just doing this and 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 i watched that the other day and i was i was guffawing I, that was so funny i wasn't watching me at all i totally watch her when i'm watching the show just so funny totally entertaining i went in on the audition with it only because in my head i had her pictured who she was and my uncle's from Dallas. I just I, I didn't know if I, if I was butchering it or I try. I also tried to keep it very vague because I didn't want it to be so from some region where someone could you know. So it's like, well, hi, you know, hello, hi, you know, hard R's. You get that Texas hard R and like y'all or hey you and you know you. I don't know. You would say you would you would leave off the G's. Leave off, yeah, I guess. Satin. It's exciting. Oh, I'm so excited. No, now I just went Cockney, Texas. <laughs> and then it just, I don't know, I kind of kept it. And then just, it, I think it got a little bit more subtle through the first season. But, and Chris is from Texas, yeah. so he has a little drawl. Well, He's, see, uh, my argument was. But the kids from, don't have it. No, I'm from Oklahoma. Narvel's from Texas. Shelby was born in Tennessee. He doesn't have either one of those accents. So I think the kids. He has a Cockney accent, well, which really is he strange. Does. It's very weird. It's very strange. But I, I, you know, I went to the argument. I don't think the children should have an accent. You know, they just talk very normal. It's kind of. Yeah. Not the MTV generation too, where kids are exposed to so much more, they're not so isolated that they hear one dialect all the time. Mm -hmm. So we got away with that. People say we we are. Uh, they were we remind. The, the Barbara Jean Reba character remind them of Lucy and Ethel. So I take that as a huge compliment. I take compliment. it as a huge compliment. Yeah. We've also gotten Laverne and Shirley before. Yeah. Of being caught in like a physical predicament, the wall episode in particular. Fun. 
But I, I think it's it's that dynamic of two, you're you're stuck together, and Lucy and Ethel, they're they're friends, but they, you know, they're in the same apartment building. One's her landlord, so there's a little different power shift too. And I think that dynamic of getting into scrapes together, getting into situations, and there's always one person that's maybe leading it, and the other person is grudgingly Following. going into it, and and letting the physical comedy come through. I think is is a wonderful aspect and we you're willing to do it I'm willing to do it mm -hmm. I mean we're the first ones and you know like I'll pick you up I'll throw you around Drive your own shoulder you know and I think the I well we were talking about that the first time I think that the producers and people realized what this was gonna be was the wedding episode the chemistry the chemistry of that and I remember my my lawyer Sandy Fox right after the show he just he came out to me and said that's it. That's and he said Lucy and Ethel. He said the same thing, and I was like, well, I, I take you know Lucy and Carla. I would take anything. You put you know put her in that. That's that's an.